Okay, this was actually this question came from Greg. Saw it somewhere. Oh, yeah. And so, he's, so one of the question was, what are some side hustles I can do as a part time agent? I don't have any closings coming up, and would love some Christmas ones. So true. And I'll tell you what, when I saw that, when it came over, all I could think about is when I first got into this business and and what I did, and and kind of where the the scare is from agents doing uh, a side hustle. And so when I first started the business and I, I was very fortunate that my mom and dad were both in real estate had, you know, started, you know, obviously been in it 20 years before I got into it. And, you know, it kind of gave me a kind of a leg up, but it didn't help. I mean, in reality, it didn't help. It kind of maybe for the disappointment, it helped from a standpoint of just hang in there. Don't worry. It's not going to the support. And, but I couldn't, I didn't sell anything for six months. And so I was like, I got to go get a job. And I, so I got a job as a waiter and it turned into a bartender at Applebee's in Burnsville. And, you know, I went there almost trying to hide. Like if I saw people, I didn't want to do it in prior life because people that knew me were like, Oh, the guy can't sell a house. So he has to be a waiter or bartender. But about probably about a month in someone that I did know came in and, and I was waiting on them. And they said to me, they said, Hey, way to go. I think you're doing what you got to do to be able to do what you eventually want to do. So something in, to that effect. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? You're 100% right. And so I flipped it and I turned it around and said, you know what? I'm doing this because I'm the guy that is, is trying to get to the next level. And I need this to be able to pay for my way to be able to get there. And then I started promoting it. The fact that it was there, I ended up selling seven different houses to people that worked there. And I only worked there probably about nine months because, um, after I sold my first house, it started going good. I think people run into that right now of, uh, of having another job and maybe getting that, like you just said, that those agents that only sell one or two a year, you know, that they're, they're part-time. How do you think, Andy, that people can go get a part-time gig and where would they do it and, and still feel like, hey, they're they're making money, they're making their payments and being able to buy a present for their kid for Christmas? I'll tell you, I've been one that my, my dad used to, um, now I'll, I'll get to your answer in a second here, but I, my dad, when I was starting in the real estate business, he said, okay, you could go out and you could make your 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour somewhere else. But if you put that same amount of effort into your real estate business, could you really catapult your business and and use that strength and that that fear to trigger people make those phone calls talk to those people that are around you get that sphere awoken of people that know you and let them know that hey i'm full-time i'm here i really could use your support and you know what here's the coolest part ever i'm brand new to the business and i've partnered up with the team and and here's what's cool about that for you i can't afford to fail i'm going to put every ounce of my effort and attention into your success and i've got the experience of my team behind me and we are going to hit a home run for you and then you're going to brag about it to all your buddies. And then we're going to get another deal. And we're going to, and this is my dad told me this when I was getting started in the business. And yeah. so I avoided the side hustle intentionally to put that, that, that anxiety or that fear of failure onto the forefront of my, my drive. And, and I use that as gasoline to drive myself. Now, if the market's slow, you're in a slow area or whatever, and you have to get a part-time job, I find no, I find nothing wrong with that. I think that what you're correct on is that, you know, the illusion that, hey, I'm going to be a bartender at this country club. And then everybody that meets me at the country club is going to like me and want to hire me. That's not going to happen. It, it does happen sometimes, like Chris, where like you meet the people internally and you they like you because they trust you and they know they're trying to better themselves, you're trying to better yourself. And that works out that way too. But for the most part, I think most people with the high end, not always, but sometimes, they want that person that has that experience or that reputation. They own that part of the lake or they people are well, you know, viewed in that area or, you know, respected. Side hustles. I mean, go sell Christmas trees. I used to make a killing selling Christmas trees. I mean, when I was in college, I used to love sitting at tree lots. People would come in. I always had a one-liner. I'd have fun with them. I'd say, what are we looking for? I'd say, boy, a guy like me in college sure could use a nice tip. I'll tie this on your car for you, ma'am. And, you know, and they would sit there and they, oh, they'd open their wallet. I didn't know you tipped these guys. You know, and they'd hand you a 10. And you're like, oh, my God, I just made 10 bucks in five minutes. And then all of a sudden, then you got another. And I used to love holiday stuff. Because people are in that fun holiday spirit, right? And it can and it can maybe play off of, you know what, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. I love Christmas versus, you know what, I really need some money to be able to yeah. kind of get my kids a present. But I think there's some, the other ones. I mean, a big, two big ones that if you want to do um, some physical stuff, like Amazon or UPS are always looking for people this yes. time of year. Being a, being a driver, being a, I mean, typically yeah. realtors have decent cars, be able to make money and... 
The other thing I think that the whole driving thing does, it gets you to understand neighborhoods too. And yeah. a lot of times people don't. All they do is, I mean, we used to have a map book and we have to look at the map coordinates and we had to go south and east and then go west and then, you know, and understand how the city worked. And I don't think anyone knows that. And I'm telling you, when you know this, the cities and the streets and, and you can, oh yeah, that one on... Um, on Bluebird, yeah, absolutely. That's over on Karen Chills, you know, just off Pike Lake Trail and uh, 42. When you when you can do that, that gives you more credibility to as a realtor, and you understand that area, so you know that you know Bluebird is really close to Sandpoint. I mean, so okay, so you've got a beach there. That road opened up, but if you're not driving around, you're not doing that stuff. It you lose that that piece of that credibility because you're always looking for some credibility and ways to be able to flip it around. And knowing knowing neighborhoods is a great way in which to do it. So if they say, you know, how's the values? I mean, over over. Oh well, hey, gosh, you can walk down to the beach. There's Sandpoint Beach, and I I grew up on that, and that's on that's on Lower Prior Lake, and all of a sudden you go into that whole thing. You know, you got the west facing side and blah, 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 blah. And you're on, you're on this side of the street so you can, you can jump on the ferry bridge and, and all of that kind of stuff. And if you don't even know anything, you know that, you've just become a very credible source. For, for sure. Yeah, that Uber, Lyft, whatever you want to call it, I think is a great way for people to make money. Um, and, and you're meeting people, you're you're still practicing your skills as well, like bartending, yeah. um, Uber. You, you can still be in that car, for an example. And this is my, I, I always got the agent brain on. Like ask questions like, so you guys like the area? What do you like about it? How'd you move here? Did you get a job here? Where do you work? Oh, I know other people that work there. And all of a sudden you start getting these connections that are there with these people. And yep, you're driving a you're driving a car down the road. You're taking them from the restaurant to their house or whatever. And you're practicing your skills. So if you could have a job where you can practice your skills, you can still do the same things you would do at an open house, like meeting people, qualifying them. Hey, are you looking for a new house? Or are you guys actually, do you live in the neighborhood? Weird way to, you have to answer. You can't say yes or no. You just have to say, I, I live in the neighborhood. Oh, so you're out checking out the competition. You guys thinking about selling, you know, or whatever. And, and those kind of questions just start, practice is everything. And I think a lot of people don't practice and the words don't naturally roll out of their mouths. And so Very what true. happens is they get in front of a customer and, uh, 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 and the customer's like, okay, see you later, bye. And you lose that opportunity. So you practice on the small fish. So when you do catch the big fish, you can put it in the boat. And, and like you said, Chris, that information is, is like wisdom, right? It's like people that know an area that well to say, oh, by the way, I've got a shortcut over to 35W. I know you work off of hundred because you told me you work at this building. Here's a great little shortcut through. And then on the way home, you stop at the bread store. It's on the corner. Oh my God, they had the best, you know, bread or whatever. Now you're making it home and you're making it convenient and you're making all of a sudden there's a lot of factors that you just put into their heads, thoughts beyond just does it have three bedrooms and two baths and a, and a cul-de-sac lot. Now you're putting into it's easy and it's fun and there's awesome restaurants. There's, oh, and right behind the target, they got a new workout place. You're going to love it. It does this, this, and this. And all of a sudden you're making that a home for them. And that, that's very important. So what you just said, Chris, I think is, you know, very valuable. Yeah. I'll tell you the other part. I mean, those are all perfect. I mean, every, everything you said was great. But the other thing that we could talk about, like an Uber and a Lyft is the flexibility of it. 